So, I went and bought these today. These are rabbit watering bottles. And uh, we already have some, just like them. This is the kind we like the best. We tried a couple of different uh, types of water bottles. And this is the one that we have liked the best. It's got a ball in, in there. There you go. That has been the best one for us to use. It hangs on your um, cage. And then it's got hangers up here to secure it. And that has been the best kind. We have, we have liked the best. And it says weather resistant. So uh, that is kind of to keep it from uh, um, <clears throat> breaking when it freezes, I believe, is the point there. So I went and bought extra ones today. This is our first winter for our rabbits. I bought extra bottles today because I am going to swap them out every morning uh, because this morning, um, this morning when I went out, their water was frozen up about, the bottom was frozen and up about so far inside the bottle was frozen. And um, it reminded me of what we'd done in you know, years previous, we hadn't done yet this year, was get out all the water bottles and keep them swapped out. And I'll show you what I mean. So, um, we'll go out. So, for the cat and dog water, we have this rubber um, pan that we got at uh, Tractor Supply. And um, it works pretty good. It usually doesn't freeze all the way through, and it's rubber, so it doesn't uh, bust it. And uh, what we do is, uh, usually we can bring uh, warm water out here and pour on top of it, and it'll thaw it out, or we can kick it around a little bit and get it, break up the ice, and get it thawed out some. So that's what we usually do for the cats and dogs. And it holds, uh, I think, three gallons. The horse also has a rubber um, trough, and the same with it. We can usually come out here and put some warm water in it and thaw some of it out or kick it real good around, which he'll do himself sometimes, <laughs> and uh, break that ice up. And usually doesn't freeze all the way to the bottom, so usually we can just kick it a little bit, break up that ice, maybe pour a little warm water in there and and it will uh, give them enough to drink for the day. And he's old. He wants to be fed. He's going to follow me because he wants to be fed. I'm going to stop down here and feed him. Mm -hmm. He's going to follow me along right on down to his bucket. This is what we use for uh, feed buckets is garbage cans with lids. There's the cow hide he's working on. That is um, ribeye. Ribeye hanging <laughs> out there. He's working on tanning that hide. It's huge. It doesn't look as huge from here, but it's four times as big as uh, the deer hides he's done. The chickens want to be fed. They have a garbage can with lid also with their feed. I made scoops out of, uh, this one is a, an old vinegar bottle. I just cut the bottom out, made a scoop. And there's also a milk, milk, a milk scoop where I just cut the bottom out of a milk jug. And they have a waterer. There's their waterer that they have, we just fill it up about, uh, oh, about once a week. Sometimes it'll be a little uh, less than a week if it's warm out, if it's, you know, hot outside. Also, um, I tried the tire last year. I haven't gotten that out of there, but uh, I had a rubber bowl in that tire last year. 
uh, to try to keep that from freezing and it did not work. So that is how I got to the point of what I'm going to show you that I'm doing. Uh, let me feed them. They're about to come unglued. So here is what I do. I get all my waterers out in the, in the winter. I get all of my waterers out and I take them in the house, clean them up, and I use them, I rotate them out each morning. So there will be fresh water that is not frozen that I can bring out in one of these, for one for the chicken and one for the quail, and bring their last one that will be frozen. I will bring it in the house and clean it up and thaw it out and have it ready for the next morning. So we keep plenty of water so that we can swap out like that. And each morning in the winter, when their water is all froze up, I just bring out a fresh one with fresh water in it and replace the frozen one. And uh, that's how we water. What do you want? What do you want? Huh? Are you aggravating everybody? Huh? You get out of my picture? Get out of my video. <laughs> Get out of my video. Anyway, <laughs> so we keep plenty of those so that we can uh, do that. Um, we, Like I said, this year we cut down and put some of the animals together so that we wouldn't have as much to feed and water through the winter. And I think that's really going to work out great for us. And you see an egg over there on the ground because I just pulled it out of the nest and laid it down so I can pack it in the house in a minute. That's the only egg I got this afternoon. They have cut down. It's gotten really cold here and they've cut down on their laying. I got um, three. Yeah, I got three this morning and one this afternoon. I normal di normally during the summer I would get um, eight to ten a day. Uh, today we got four. Here's what I've recently got. We don't have a water hose that reaches all the way out here. Uh, I have one hanging there, but we don't have a socket, a um, <laughs> spigot out here. So, I recently got this. I don't know how well it's going to hold up. It is a collapsible uh, rain barrel, and I don't know how well it's going to hold up. Um, so, we may eventually get one of the uh, blue... Um, uh, blue ones that's an actual barrel uh, this one was real cheap and it's collapsible I don't know how well it'll hold up we'll see but that helps a whole lot it gets rain in it it has stayed uh, pretty full it has stayed up to probably about the name most of the time so far and uh, I use it every morning because it is right here beside the animals I can just bring their water over here and get water out of that it won't work this winter that will not work because I already had a situation to where the spigot was froze up a little bit and I had to unzip it and dip down in there to get the water and there was ice it was ice on top it wasn't froze very solid but the spigot was frozen so that will not work this winter it has come in handy this fall so far. I just got it recently. And it has come in handy so far, but won't work through the winter. So here is the rabbit cages. We just kept the two females for the winter. And then before spring or early spring, we will get a buck and uh, so that we can breed them and uh, raise some rabbits. Um, next year to uh, uh, put in the freezer camp. So here is those same water bottles that we that I just bought new ones of so that we can walk out here and replace them each morning. We have their feeders that I hate. I absolutely hate these feeders. They hang on the outside of the cage and the part for them to eat in is inside you've probably seen these maybe it just hangs there on the cage you dump the feed in here and 
they eat it inside there. Well, what tends to happen to us is when it rains, it leaks in here and gets this all soggy and it's a nasty mess. So, Lee put these little catchments up here to make the rain come off and fall off the ends. Does not work. It still gets rain in there. Maybe these are not wide enough to cover it enough to keep that from happening. But I hate them. I hate these. And maybe these should have been a little wider to come on out. He said he should have made this lip on the cage a little bit longer to hang out but he didn't realize until he built it and then we went and got the feeders and then he realized that these uh, roofs should have came on out so here's what I done to fix that I got these little bowls that screw on the cage and put them on the door I can open the door and put the food in here close the door up and that has worked good that has worked good for them I also got them mineral licks that they're not really using they haven't really used those a whole lot there was a mineral lick and a salt lick together in one package they have used the salt uh, some Here's, here it is going to show that and can find it. I have used that some but not the mineral because I hung it up. They had It had one little hanger and didn't have a hanger for both licks. So anyway just saying here's this side. This is the other female. We've got them separated. There's her bowl. Same setup over here. I hate these. And there's their water. We will swap that water out each morning when it's uh, freezing weather. So there you go. If you're making your rabbit cages, make your roof come way out over your um, cage there. Now, we do have a lean-to here. This is a lean-to that the horse goes in. And they're on the outside of the lean-to. When the horse is gone, and he is old... He is, I believe, about 17, 18 years old now. When he is gone, we could put the cages over in there, and that would solve some of our problems. We may do that. So anyway, and here's their feed bucket. Same situation. They've got a, they've got a smaller can. It don't take them as much feed. So we got a small can for them. There's that set up. So there you go. That is our feed and water system here at our homestead uh, for the winter, and um, it is not perfected. We've we've but we've done this for about two years that we have done it this way, and it is kind of working out for us. Some things work, some things don't. If you have any suggestions, we would love for you to put those in the comments below. Tell us how you do it tell us what we could do better or different we appreciate the comments and the feedback and would love to know what you might would do different than we're doing or what you do whether it's right or wrong or better than ours or not what do you do and um, watch us on friday nights at 8 p.m central time we have a live show and have lots of fun we talk about different uh, homestead subjects but we also have a lot of fun so um Leave a comment and let us know uh, what you think about our winter feeding and watering program here.